Are great leaders born or made? We'll find out in Theories of Leadership, Great Man Theory. Here we have a list of leadership theories provided by changingminds.org. We'll go over each one of these briefly before we move on to the Great Man Theory. The Great Man Theory states that great men are born, not made. Trait theory suggests that people are born with traits more suited towards leadership, such as assertiveness and self-confidence. Behavioral theories are the opposite of the great man theory, in that they believe that great men are made rather than born. Participative leadership suggests that people are less competitive and more committed when working towards joint goals. Situational leadership suggests that effective leadership depends on a wide range of situational factors. Contingency theories state that there is no one best way to be a leader, and that one leadership theory may work well in one situation while not working well in another. Transactional leadership works through chain of command and states that people are motivated through reward and punishment systems. Transformational leadership says that people follow leaders who are inspirational and have a great vision. The Great Man Theory The Great Man Theory, as stated before, believes that leaders are born and not made. It also believes that great leaders will arise when there is a great need. Examples of this throughout U.S. history are Benjamin Franklin and Abraham Lincoln. Entrepreneurs such as Walt Disney and Steve Jobs also embody the spirit of what the great man theory believes. We will now quickly review the five power bases from which one person may influence another. Legitimate power is the belief that one person has the authority to exert influence while others have the obligation to accept it. Expert knowledge comes from one's superior knowledge in a particular field, as well as the credibility with one's subordinates. When an individual tries to influence someone to reach mutual goals, it is often known as referent power. Reward power, as the name sounds, tries to influence people with the promise of something desirable. Coercive power is different than reward power in that rather than reward good behavior, it penalizes bad behavior. I believe that the great man theory lends itself to the use of legitimate power for the exertion of influence over others due to the fact that typically under the great man theory you end up with leaders who are famous already or are of great wealth and people tend to believe that they are uh, have the right to be in power. Let's talk about the abuse of legitimate power. If the leader comes in and exerts questionable authority it can create image issues for a company. When you have employees that are incredibly loyal to your business and you put them into a situation where you tell them the company might fail if they don't move forward with this unethical decision, you end up with a ethical issue that is tough for people to deal with. This leads into the impossible situation of, I'm going to fire you unless you do this. While legitimate power has its drawbacks, it does have its benefits as well. If your leader has strong ethical character, you can do wonders for your customers and employees alike. The motivation factor will allow your employees to accomplish many great tasks. My last item talks about bringing entities back from the brink. And what I mean by this is simply when a company is on the brink of disaster, bringing in a great person can sometimes help give them the boost they need and move them onto the right track. A good example of this is the company Apple. After previously firing Steve Jobs, when the company was struggling to exist, they ended up bringing him back, and through his innovation and skills, he brought the company back to being the powerhouse it is today. Expert power is the other basis on which I believe that great men, coming from the great men theory, will use to exert their influence on others. This is simply on the fact that you may believe that this person is the authority on a specific topic. You are going to listen to them because they are tried and true tested.
Of course, expert power does have its ethical issues. One of them is manipulation. With expert power, it's very easy to manipulate someone into doing what you want them to do, uh, whether that's ethical or not. The other issue is deceitfulness. Someone in a position of expert power can easily lie to someone and that person would believe that without a question of a doubt, this is to be truth. So you can see the issue that can arise there. Once again, I believe that the benefits outweigh the issues as long as your person in power is of ethical soundness. First of all, if your leader has strong ethics, the right decisions are being made and they're being made quickly. This does require strong ethical beliefs. When your leader is a expert, it benefits all involved. This includes customers and employees. There is much value to be gained from having someone on your side that is of expert power. So here's a quick overview of what we learned. We talked about the great man theory. What that means is that great men are born and not made. I then went on to discuss the two types of power that I believe lend themselves to the, the great man theory. Legitimate power and expert power. Legitimate power is the belief that the person in charge has the authority to make the decision and that others have to oblige. Expert power talks about a person that has implied power based on credibility with its employees. In most cases, this is topic specific. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you found it both interesting and insightful.